British Columbia is home to some of the most diverse agricultural products in Canada. From the traditional family farm to vineyards or fisheries, if you're into eating local foods, you're in luck. I'm Lori Petrick, dietitian and local food lover. Join me as I visit BC food producers and farmers who are committed to providing fresh local foods that are good for you and good for our earth. Today we're at Meet Your Maker, a BC annual networking event where small-scale regional food businesses grow. Since 2008, hundreds of British Columbian restaurateurs, caterers, grocers, farmers, fishers and ranchers have met at Meet Your Maker, a local food trade show organized by Farm Folk City Folk, a non-profit society that works to cultivate a local, sustainable food system. I spoke with Farm Folk City Folk's Executive Director, Nicholas Scapolati, and asked him how Meet Your Maker came to fruition. The Meet Your Maker concept is based on a great project out of Oregon called the Farmer Chef Connection. And basically it's bringing farmers and chefs, producers and buyers together and upscaling their businesses through creating business relationships and learning how to work together. One of my favorite stories about Meet Your Maker is a chef and a farmer sitting down and the chef saying, you can't show up at 2 o'clock in the afternoon and expect me to buy herbs from you because I'm cooking. And at the same time, the farmer saying to the chef, you know, you can't expect me to show up five days a week because I'm a farmer. I have to work on a farm. So it's about learning how to work together and understanding each other's businesses. Today is all about networking, meeting people in the industry. I think the real key is going to be afterwards, following up with these people. And on the buying perspective, it's going back and saying to the chef, this is what we found, this is something you could work with. And again, trying to see whether it works um, from a supply perspective. You've been in the food business for quite a while. Did mm -hmm. you have any expectations of this event? I knew there'd be some real passionate uh, producers here, which is so good to connect with because you kind of forget about it when you're in your own business. In many ways, it's, it's exceeded my expectations. Last year, Rocky Mountain Flatbread did leave the event with a Meet Your Maker marriage. They teamed up with Emmy Doe, urban farmer and founder of Yummy Yards. I visited Emmy at one of her urban farm sites to find out what it takes to meet Rocky Mountain standards of only sourcing the best local ingredients. Woo, Emmy! Hey! How's it going? Good, how are you doing? Good, wow, it looks like spring has sprung in here. <laughs> Your seedlings look great. Are they near ready to go outside and grow? Just about. Um, well, some of them are going to be in here for another month, but like these onions, for example, they've outgrown their initial cells. When transplanting them up, we'll probably be putting them out in the field in the next two or three weeks. It's just a little, they're a little tender and we're going to have some frosts again. And what do you all have in here today? So we have onions and leeks, tomatillos, ground cherries, actual tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, parsley, cilantro, cabbages, and this is our specialty beet mix right here. Interesting. I just ate your beets over at Rocky Mountain Flatbread when I ordered one of their pizzas. Tell me a little bit about the Meet Your Maker Made marriage that you have with Rocky Mountain Flatbread. Yeah, so Meet Your Maker is a fantastic event. It's a little bit daunting for farmers because you're going there to basically showcase your product to food service industry um, members. We were scared almost to 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 jump to that level we didn't know if what our what we were offering was what um, restaurants were looking for and because of our the nature of our co-op we needed restaurants to really buy into um, supporting us in in quantity and making sure that every week they were um, okay with accepting a, a certain volume every week. We send a fresh sheet to Rocky Mountain to their two chefs and they tell us what items they want and we show up with these absolutely bountiful baskets of, of the produce that's uh, fresh and uh, seasonal at that time. You're considered an urban farmer. What does that mean to be an urban farmer versus a rural farmer? 
So there's different definitions. Um, so one is that you're growing in a urban area. Another is that you're growing in a traditionally rural area, but one that's being encroached on by urban development. And so I'm kind of doing both. I'm taking land that was not originally used for agriculture in um, residential areas and demonstrating how agriculture can be reintroduced in people's backyards. And I'm also growing in Richmond where originally it was used for agricultural purposes, but now with all of the housing developments and all the industrial developments, it's turning into a more a more urban area. You have some chicken coops underneath your feet <laughs> here. Are these their permanent homes? This isn't their permanent home. This is what we call our brooding system. It's their incubation area, completely animal proof, and they serve a dual purpose. We um, can keep a really close eye on them, make sure that they're that they get through their really tender age when they're the most at risk. And as well, um, having them in here heats the greenhouse, provides a heating source so our uh, plants can germinate faster and, um, and keeps them risk free of, of frost. There's a heritage apple orchard over there where they have a, a pest issue. And so what um, the, the chickens do is they graze underneath and they get the, the pests before they get into their larval stage and, and, and infect the, the, the crop. So you have happy chickens getting lots of protein. Yeah. And then you have really nutritious apples that you don't have to worry about spraying. Yeah. And these are cherry trees. And that's kind of the namesake of their farm is Cherry Lane Farm. And under here, we're going to be pasturing some more chickens later on this season, starting in July. They'll be in what we call chicken tractors. So they're enclosed systems where we can move them every day so they have access to fresh grass, um, but, uh, but that they're enclosed so that they don't fly away. So these are our layers right here. The white ones are Colombians and the brown ones are, are Isa Browns. Hey, girls. Hello! It's a windy day, hey? We've done some pretty urban renos to our chicken coop, including an automatic chicken door. So if I feel like staying out on the town one night, I know that my timer will activate the chicken door to lower it and keep them safe from predators. I did my time, as most other farmers do, apprenticing um, and working on organic farms. Urban farming in itself is a really new take on organic agriculture and so I didn't have a direct mentor for how to grow in an urban setting. So I'm applying what I learned out in these 20, 30, 40 acre farms on a, <laughs> on a very small scale. So where all of us urban farmers are kind of trailblazing in, in a sense, um, developing and troubleshooting and uh, creating new systems of, of how to do this effectively. For Farm Folk, City Folk, I'm Lori, and this has been Good For You and Good For Our Earth.